All right, in this little presentation, which I guess will probably be a few videos long, what I'm gonna do is talk about hyper operations because really what I wanna to get, to, get into is Graham's number. And to really understand Graham's number, well, you gotta know about hyper operations. All right, we're gonna start out with the game. Now, I'm gonna call it the no triangle game on four vertices because I'm not the least bit creative and we have four vertices and the whole point of the game is to make sure you don't have any triangles. And the way the game is played is you take the vertices and you connect every pair of vertices with an edge. Importantly, that edge either has to be red or blue, so you have two different colors to choose from. So here, for example, is one way you connect all the different edge, all the different vertices with edges. But the key thing is you want to make sure you don't create any red triangles or any blue triangles. And when I say triangles, I mean triangles that are using the vertices. So I don't know, something like this, if this were all red, would not count as a triangle. However, this right here does count as a triangle because it's three vertices all connected with red lines. There's an easier look at it. And so my question to you is, can you do it? And the answer is, well, yeah, I think so. It doesn't seem like that's hard. You can try it on your own if you want. Pause the video. Let's see. I bet I can work through it pretty easily. Maybe I connect these guys with red. I don't want to connect these guys with red because they'd give me a triangle. So maybe I go over here. And maybe that's enough that I can switch colors. Let's see. I still need to connect these two vertices over here. I need to connect these guys. And I also need to connect these guys. I believe I have now connected all pairs of vertices with either a red or a blue line. And I think I managed to do so in such a way that I didn't create any red triangles or any blue triangles. So what I just did is won the no triangle game on four vertices. And you're like, great, not that impressed. All right, well, let's move on. What if we have five vertices? So exact same game, exact same rules, just now we have five vertices. So you're gonna connect every pair of vertices with an edge, and that edge is either gonna be red or blue. And my question is, can you do it in such a way that you don't end up with any red triangles or any blue triangles? And I believe the answer to that question is yes, I think you can. Lots of different ways you can do so. One way you could do so is if you connected kind of the outside all in one color, and then you went in and drew this pretty little star in the other color on the inside. I think what ends up happening is you've connected all of the pairs of vertices, and I don't believe you have any triangles. And you're like, yeah, you do, there's a triangle right there. Okay, but you don't have any triangles using these vertices. I believe this is one of the many different ways you can win the no triangle game on five vertices. What about six vertices? And you're like, you gotta be kidding me. How long are we gonna do this? This is the last one. Same rules, more vertices. But don't pause this video and try to do it. I mean, you can if you want, but don't spend too much time trying to find a solution because I think what you'll find is it's impossible to do. And like, really? It's impossible? It's so easy or relatively easy with four vertices and with five vertices. Why is it impossible on six vertices? Well, it turns out that with six vertices, I can prove to you that you can't do it. And the way the proof goes, kind of interesting, it uses what's called the pigeonhole principle is you pick a vertex. It doesn't matter which one we're going to pick on this guy right here, but really it doesn't matter. You pick any vertex, pick whichever one is your favorite. This vertex has to be connected to at least three of these remaining five vertices using edges of the exact same color. And you're like, whoa, how do you know that? Well, imagine it doesn't, right? Imagine there are not three of these five vertices that this vertex is connected to with red. If there's five total vertices that this needs to be connected to and less than three of them are connected with red, that means at most two of them are connected with red. So there's five other vertices, and at most two of them are connected with red. That leaves three that are not connected with red, and therefore, we have three that are connected with blue. Because there's five other vertices, and I only have two choices of colors to connect this vertex to those other five with, there must be at least three of them that are connected to this vertex with the exact same color edge. And yeah, it's not necessarily these three, Maybe it's this one and this one, and I don't know, this one down here. But it doesn't matter which three it is, I will end up with the triangle if three vertices are all connected with the same color, no matter where those three are, whether it's here, here, and way down here, or here, here, and here, or whatever. The point is, without losing any generality at all, I can suppose that I have this vertex connected to these other three, all with the same color here. And if you buy that argument so far, you'll be able to see pretty quickly how we can't possibly win the no triangle game on six vertices. Because if we have this situation, I ask you the question, what color must connect these two vertices right here? And you're like, well, it can't be red because if it was red, we'd lose the no triangle game, right? So it's gotta be blue. Okay, what about these two right here? Well, I guess same argument, right? It can't be red because if it's red, we lose the no triangle game. So it's gotta be blue. And I'm like, aha. What about these two? And you're like, oh man, I guess you got me because it can't be red because if it were red, then we would connect these three vertices with a triangle. So it must be blue, but blue is problematic because blue creates a triangle with these three vertices. The point of this 
example, because I hesitate to even call it a proof, is supposed to be an argument that you can't win the no triangle game on six vertices. And if you buy that argument, great, we can move on. Although maybe before I get off this slide, it's worth pointing out that if we can't win the no triangle game with six vertices, we certainly can't win it with seven vertices because if we have an extra vertex out here, we just showed that we're guaranteed to have a triangle just with these six. So I don't even care what this guy's connected to. We already got a triangle in one color with these six. Who This one's certainly not gonna mess that up. So if we can't win the no triangle game on six vertices, we can't win the no triangle game on any number of vertices greater than or equal to six. The no triangle game we've been playing is an example of what's called Ramsey theory, which is a really interesting little corner of math. Informally, the way I like to think about Ramsey theory is what it does is it gives you criteria for which order must exist. Because order is kind of an interesting topic in mathematics. And you're like, what do you mean by order? Well, one possible example of order would be the existence of a red or a blue triangle, right? That's some sort of order in these chaotic graphs that I can draw where I'm connecting all these different vertices with different colors. In fact, if we want to sound kind of impressive, what we could do is give a technical description of the no triangle game to try to tie it into Ramsey theory. So if you were trying to impress somebody, maybe you'd ask the question, given a two colored complete graph on n vertices, must there exist a monochromatic complete subgraph on three vertices? And they look at you like you're crazy, but really this isn't that complex of a question. When we say a two colored, we mean we're gonna connect the vertices with either a red line or a blue line. When we say a complete graph, all that means is any pair of vertices must be connected with an edge. It's a complete graph on n vertices because we want to change the number of vertices that we play with. Right? We started with four and then we played the no triangle game on five vertices and then on six. So n was four, five, and six on the three different examples we've seen. And the question is, if you're in this situation where you're connecting the n vertices of your graph and you're connecting all of them because it's complete and you're only using either red or blue edges because it's two colored, must there exist a monochroma monochromatic complete subgraph on three vertices? Okay, monochromatic means it's either gonna be red or blue. I don't care about triangles where one of the legs is red and the other two are blue. It has to be just one color, whether all red or all blue. Complete subgraph. So remember this adjective complete, when we used it over here, means every single pair of vertices must be connected. So what a complete subgraph is, is a subset of the vertices so that they're all connected. So what's a complete subgraph on three vertices? Well, if you have three vertices and they're all connected, what you have is a triangle. So if you have a monochromatic complete subgraph on three vertices, what you have is either a red triangle or a blue triangle. And complete subgraph on three vertices is kind of a mouthful. So when you're in the field of graph theory, there's a symbol that represents that and it's K3. So this question is really just asking us, can you win the no triangle game on n vertices. And interestingly, inside Ramsey theory, there's something called Ramsey's theorem. And what that says is you can always find a monochromatic KM subgraph for any given M. So if M equals three, we're saying you can always find a red or blue triangle as long as you make N large enough, as long as the number of vertices on your original graph is large enough. So we just saw this in action, right? We saw that, yeah, you couldn't, guarantee the existence of a triangle if n was only four we could win the no triangle game you couldn't guarantee the existence of this monochromatic triangle if n was five we we're able to win the no triangle game in that case as well but if n were large enough namely six or larger then there has to be a monochromatic k3 subgraph in other words a red triangle or a blue triangle what i'm saying is that if m equals three we need n to be equal to six However, you'll note with Ramsey's theorem, it doesn't say you can always find a monochromatic K3 subgraph. It says you can always find a monochromatic KM subgraph for any given M. So if I wanted to take this up a level, I could, instead of looking for triangles, or should I say a complete subgraph on three vertices, I could look for a complete subgraph on four vertices. And you're like, oh, cool, like a square, I guess, huh? Uh, kind of. I mean, it would be a square but that's not connecting all the vertices. I'd also need a little X across the middle if I wanted to make sure that every pair of these four vertices were connected with the line. So what Ramsey's theory says is that if you have N large enough, you can guarantee to find a K4 in there, all of one color. How big? Turns out that N has to be at least 18, which is kind of wild that it jumps up so quickly. It's kind of crazy to me anyways, that you could draw a complete graph with 17 vertices 
and you could color it with just two colors. So you could connect each pair of those 17 vertices with either a red line or a blue line. And you could do so really cleverly to avoid ever drawing one of these. I wouldn't want to play that game. That sounds miserable trying to make sure I don't draw one of these with 17 vertices going around. You probably need a computer to figure it out or something. But you can find that picture. You can Google it and find a picture that shows a complete subgraph on 17 vertices that does not contain a monochromatic K4. But it turns out that if you have 18, you have to have one of these. And the argument that you can make for having to have one of these is pretty similar to the argument that we made for having to have one of these when n was equal to six. If you Google something like proof of r and then four comma four, this is one of Ramsey's numbers. The Ramsey number on four comma four is really referring to this statement right here. You can read the proof if you're into that kind of stuff. And we don't have to stop at four. We can talk about a complete subgraph on five vertices. Here's my five vertices. And if you can connect all of them, you get this little picture. This is what a complete graph on five vertices look like. Uh, was, is that like the anarchy symbol or maybe that's with the circle around it? I don't know. I don't care. The point is just Ramsey's theorem says that if n was large enough, if we had a complete graph on enough vertices and we only use two colors to connect all the different vertices together, then there'd be, then you could guarantee the existence of one of these with one of the colors. And you're like, oh, what is it, right? It was six if we're looking for one of these. It was 18 if we're looking for one of these. What is it if you're looking for one of these? I don't know. And it's not that I don't know. Humankind doesn't know. It's kind of interesting that humankind does not know the answer to this question. It seems pretty simple. It seems like something you could do with brute force just with computers, but you can't. What we, humankind, do know is that that magic number is somewhere between 43 and 48 is the cutoff. It's not six, it's not 18, it's somewhere in here. It's kind of crazy to me that we are unable to figure out which of these numbers is the true answer for that. There's lots of unknown questions in Ramsey's theory, which I think makes it a pretty interesting topic. We now know enough about Ramsey theory for everything we'll need for this presentation, but I didn't want to stop talking about Ramsey theory because there's one extra thing that I want to leave you with that I think is kind of cool. And really what it comes down to is the fact that Ramsey's theory doesn't just work with these two colored graphs that we've seen before. So if you wanted to, for some reason, introduce a third color. So now you're connecting all of the vertices in your graph with either red, blue, or I don't know, maybe green edges. It turns out that if you have a three color complete graph on 17 vertices, it must contain a monochromatic K3. But that statement in its own right isn't all that interesting, but I guess it kind of implies that if we only had 16 vertices instead of 17 vertices, we could be really clever and color the edges in our three different colors, red, blue, and green, and not contain any monochromatic K3s. And maybe that's not that interesting either, but it gives me an excuse to leave you with a pretty cool picture. The picture of a three colored complete graph on 16 vertices that does not contain a monochromatic K3, I just think it's cool. Here it is. There's actually two different versions. These are kind of fundamentally different in the way they're constructed. Remember the location of the vertices doesn't matter at all. They're just put where they're put to try to show the reader kind of the structure or the organization of the graph. Um, but these two are fundamentally different, but they're just different ways. You can three color a complete graph on 16 vertices without including a monochromatic K3. It's not at all necessary for Graham's number. It's really not at all necessary for our talk, but it's a cool picture. So it's something I thought I'd leave you with. What I'll do in the next video is I'll kind of pick up from here and we'll use the rest of the information we learned on Ramsey's theory and use it in some pretty wild cases where we're gonna to need to know about objects that have more than just three dimensions. So that's all already kind of crazy, but that will enable us to create a game that eventually will lead us to Graham's number.